you have no idea what you're talking about. You have no idea what you're singing about. And I know you don't care. I know you don't care because ultimately you don't have three brain cells to rub together. Hi, my name is Mike. Welcome to my vlog, which is about football in general and Burnley FC in particular. A vlog that is done by someone who was there when we were shit and manages to produce content even when we're good. This is the day after the Wigan game, uh, now a procession, top versus bottom, a regal procession to the title. Not a bad game actually, but then the result was never in doubt. A little bit boring slightly in the second half, if I have to say so, because Claris were so superior to a struggling Wigan team, who actually I think did a little better than some of the teams that have come to the turf this year, and actually tried to play good football, they had a couple of good chances, admittedly self-inflicted uh, where they could have scored and made a bit more of a game of it but as teams at the bottom of the table tend to find out that when it's bad it's getting really bad there was the, just the stupidest two yellow cards for their centre-back and uh, I have to admit I think they were on the bad side of a particularly picky and not particularly good referee um, he didn't seem to have a good game all round he seemed very eager to pull the yellows out if you looked at his Stats before the game, he's averaged four yellows a game, and when that defender is erratic, was actually pulled down Teller twice in a row. He was just determined to pull the yellow card and get him sent off. I think Wigan were a little bit unlucky. They tried, but though unfortunately that's a team that is struggling and off the pitch is also struggling as a club. Hopefully, they can get themselves sorted um, and get some stability in in there because you know no club should have to go through what Wigan are potentially going through but it was uh, aside from that it was a fairly routine game uh, notable for a couple of things a couple positive one negative uh, one of the positives definitely Lyle Foster finally getting that goal which he took and smashed home from my point of view I was right behind it where I sit in the uh, long side upper he put that away with a determination and it was an excellent goal, I think, all work, all the way worked around. I've had a little bit of a worry about Foster kind of being left out of what is clearly a friendship, um, a long-standing friendship between Teller and Obafemi. But Obafemi did well, uh, given credit for setting up that chance, which wasn't an easy chance either. But uh, he put it away into the far corner really, really well. And you could see the relief. And to be honest, I think the uh, the gratitude or the, the happiness of the fans for seeing him score as well, and the team, but definitely the fans, you could definitely feel that it was like, yeah, good on you lad, uh, let's see what you can do, because I don't think he's done much wrong. He's been thrown into the middle of a sort of a championship battle, a team that is purring along pretty well, it must be said, uh, with a strike force that is doing pretty well. He's had to come in with a fairly big price tag uh, for this level. Um, and it takes time. It takes time to build up. It takes time to get used to the, the way the team plays. It takes time to, to get up to speed of the championship. And I think he's been OK. And I'm really, really pleased. Let's see what he can do for the rest of the season. So, yeah, that was positive. One of the negatives. Um, and it was something I almost did uh, talk about last week when we had the events that happened in Blackpool after the game. But... I kind of held my powder on that because there is no point trying to figure out who did what to whom and going on rumour and innuendo. So there's no point making a comment on that until we know exactly what happened. But there was the chanting yesterday, which was uh, towards James McLean. And, you know, we can go into the ins and outs of, of his particular stance. I speak as someone who... Uh, lived and worked in, in Ireland in Dublin for a couple of years has an understanding of the history of uh, the Irish uh, conflict is probably the best way of putting it um, so to hear some fairly moronic chanting coming from the usual suspects in the cricket field then is just like oh, yeah do we really have to go through this you are such a tiresome bunch of banter wankers you really really are you have no idea what you're talking about you have no idea what you're singing about and i know you don't care i know you don't care because ultimately you don't have three brain cells to rub together you're useless you're ignorant you're stupid you're only there to annoy the away fans you're not there to 
uh, support the club. Um, you just think it's all a great big laugh. And if you're upset by me saying these things, if you're upset by saying that you can't handle your cheap cocaine and your expensive beer, and uh, if you drink any more, then you lose alcohol kills brain cells, and if you lose any more, you're going to be a talking monkey. Um, and I'm surprised that you can tie your own shoelaces. If you're upset and offended by any of that, it's just banter. Where's your sense of humour? Anyway, one of the more surreal uh, things that we had was the sight of J.J. Uh, Watt, an American football player, sitting uh, in the director's box with a potential, according to the rumours, potentially investing in the club. Um, at some point, well, after the 15th of April last year, uh, it feels like Burnley FC dropped into uh, a parallel universe where anything could happen and anything indeed has happened. And now you sort of get, go, an American football superstar is going to invest in Burnley FC. And you just go, yeah, whatever, sounds about right. I, I know nothing about uh, American football and I care even less. Uh, but looking up and doing some research on J.J. Watt, he seems a fantastic individual. Um, he obviously was a great player uh, of that particular sport, apparently one of, all the, uh, one of the best of all time and a potential Hall of Famer. Um, his work uh, off the field is absolutely exemplary. So that's pretty cool, you know, if he does decide and, and he's coming to Burnley and he, he seems to appreciate coming to Burnley and that's, that's a good thing, you know, cool, fantastic. So if he does, you know, decide to invest, then I'd far rather it was someone like that. I'd far rather it was someone who was an excellent human being uh, or at least, you know, appears to be an excellent human being by all reports is, you know, a fantastic uh, person uh, for his community and he's the kind of person who you want to invest uh, into a community football club like Burnley given the the caliber and the standard of you know investors in football clubs these days mentioning no Newcastles I'd far rather have someone like JJ Watt investing in my football club and the next time a government minister looks at the Newcastle executive box that might give them some very nasty ideas about what they would do to someone like Gary Lineker who I completely support by the way so yeah um that's basically it for a, a Wigan game. We go over to Hull and there's kind of a bit of a conflict here. Obviously, we want to keep rolling towards promotion, keep rolling towards the title. Uh, if we get three points against Hull, um, who have had a little bit of a revival recently, then that would actually uh, potentially see us clinch promotion away at Borough on this 7th of April. That would be a fantastic thing to do. Um, but... I wonder if you know the club wants to focus more on the Man City game, the FA Cup game, on Saturday. I'm a little bit conflicted about that. I kind of like the idea of going to City with a full-strength side. I like the idea of giving them a real good go, just to see how we measure up. Now, that's a really good thing for planning for the future, but it sort of takes away from the people who have played in the FA Cup game so far. So far. I mean, people like Bailey Peacock-Farrell, uh, Ahmed al, al These players have done well to get us so far, and then suddenly to get them knocked aside uh, because it's a you know a bigger match, uh, it seems a little bit unfair. But then I'm not paid to make the calls like Vincent Company, um, and uh, it would be interesting though. I do kind of err on the side of seeing. Let's see how good we really are. Let's see how we can do it. Um, I am one of those hopeless optimist who has bought a ticket for this 7,800 tickets sold um, so it should be good noise what should Burnley do to, to take on Man City and I'm going to try and ignore all the hype around company going back what should we do to take on uh, the most expensive and potentially you know explosive uh, club in, in Europe certainly in uh, the UK part of me is kind of thinking why don't we go there and play Deichbull you know, let's surprise them. Just because we've lost 15 times that way in a row, they won't be expecting it this time. The other part of it is if we can keep the ball. Our game is, is based on keeping the ball, keeping possession. And we're going to go up against the team that is hardest to do that against. But if we can do it, if we can actually kind of impose our game a little bit on City, then the chance is there. You know, it's, it's a cup game. It's a one-off 
it's presumably going to be on television, though actually who blooming knows right now, given the state of things. But it will be interesting to see how the Clarets do, how the Clarets approach it. What's kind of nice is they're not actually just deciding to chuck this one away either, you know. In previous years, it just, oh, it was a pain. You know, the FA Cup was a pain, whether in the Championship, whether in uh, the Premier League. I still remember as well, prior to that, going to, uh, when we played Watford, I think, in the sixth round. And, you know, that excitement, and then they absolutely chucked one in there. I'm going on Saturday, more in hope than expectation. Um, it's funnily enough, it's the second closest league game to where I live, so it's going to be a nice little day out for me. It's going to be a little bit easier. But let's see, I'm excited for it. A little bit of cup fever, and miracles happen. You know, miracles happen in the cup. City are not infallible when it comes to these competitions. They may be concentrating more on the Champions League, which is great, fantastic. Um, and if that miracle happens, uh, then we got a day out in London. Wouldn't that be amazing? Wouldn't that be an amazing thing to see? It doesn't matter who it's against. You know, you get that day out in London. Um, that would be utterly fantastic. So, let's see. Let's see what happens on Saturday. Um, I, have, I have confidence. I have more confidence, strangely enough, in this Championship squad than I had in any Premier League squad. And that's an example of the optimism around the club and the changes around the club that actually we go on Saturday, we'll have 7,800 7, uh, Clarence fans behind them and we'll give it a go. We'll actually go there and give it a go as opposed to limiting the damage. And I can't ask for anything more than that. So that is it for this week. If you see me at the game, say hello. I'm going to be on level three. I think uh, I need to take an oxygen tent and uh, some Sherpas because uh, I think I'm from the back row. Um, if you agree with what I've said in this video, give us a like, give us a subscribe if you really agree with it. Leave your comments below. Until the next time, up the clarets.